Yo, it's Smallmouth Crush. Is tournament fishing worth it? Man, I don't know. I did the math. I got the calculator out. I put pen to paper. I'm depressed. I'll get into it. It's all coming up. Man, I don't care if you're a patch pirate from Nebraska or a big stick down in Florida. Tournament fishing is a blast. A lot of you guys enjoy it. A lot of you guys that are watching this show right now love to fish tournaments or maybe you're thinking about it. Today's video is going to be all about the costs associated with tournament fishing and specifically the FLW BFLs, the local tournaments. Tournaments that are two to six hours away from your house. You're competing against your local peer group of anglers. And then I'm also going to do a part two to this video. That will be uploaded in the next couple days. And I'm actually going to be focusing on the FLW Costa. So fishing the, at the open, at the regional level, and the costs associated with that. That's even more scarier than, than these local BFLs. And so I'm going to talk about if you're going to you know, you know, fish a full season. And does it make sense? I mean, in my mind, there's, there's stages. You know, you want to get a tournament fishing. A lot of the team tournaments is where you start. And perhaps you want to start branching off on your own. I really enjoy fishing a boat or non-boater format like the uh, FLWs have to offer. So there's more to it than just catching, you know, five fish by three o'clock. And the financial side of it, um, you know, it's it's tough to justify. It really is. I don't want to uh, sound like a downer here, but uh, it's expensive. That's that's the major challenge for. You know, most people fishing tournaments is obviously the expense side of things. You know, I fished competitively at the highest level on the Bassmaster Elite Series for a number of years. And I didn't leave because I didn't like it or didn't want to continue fishing. I left because I ran out of money. Uh, it was just $100,000 a year in expenses, uh, especially back when I was fishing when the economy was was struggling quite a bit. I mean, it was hard. So you gotta be prepared. You gotta know when to make the right steps. So if you wanna step up from team tournaments, I think the BFLs are great. Once you start, you know, you can consistently get in the top 10, you know, three out of five BFLs. Uh, I think you're ready to step it up to the um, the FLW Coastas if you have the cash. I mean, there's a lot of money you're gonna be spending uh, chasing this 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 dream I guess which there's nothing wrong with it but things change too but my perspective on bass fishing has changed I, and I don't want to get off topic too much because I will talk a lot about this in part two but you know at first right now we don't really know the three major organizations the Bass Pro Tour the FLW and the Bass Elite Series you know I I always wanted to get back on tour back on the Elite Series well I mean, the competition has shifted over. Things have changed, and I don't know what organization I would want to fish moving forward just yet. I think we'll have a better idea this next year how things are going to unfold with the three organizations. But to give you an example right now, the FLW Tour, uh, I qualified for it two years in a row now through the coasts and turned it down because in my mind it was always, you know, it was more prestigious to fish the Bassmaster Elite Series. That's where all the big names were, that's where the competition was, and now that's diluted. You know, it, there's guys that are fishing that, that uh, you know, qualified, not the right way, but they're there now, and um, I just think it's it's tainted. It's, it's, to me, it feels like they're just both glorified opens, FLW and Bass. Now, my, that's just my opinion, guys. I'd love to hear your opinions as well. Um, I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen with the with the Pro Bass Tour, and if they're going to open that up for a qualification, I think that would be the route, the goal to go to, if I wanted to continue and try to fish at the higher higher levels. Who knows? We're going to find out. All right, sorry, I went off on a small little rant there about the tournaments and and you know my opinions on that. Let's stick to the topic here. We need to talk about the expenses and what it takes to fish. At the local level so let's hop on the computer here and i'll show you guys uh what i'm working with well we might have to try this all over again because i lost my train of thought and where i was at with this whole deal next time put your phone on Watch silent ryan baum mechanic ryan let me grab this yo you're live on smallmouth crush 
What's up? Hold on a second. Guys, I'm going to talk to mechanic Ryan, and we'll get back to the expenses as soon as I get him off the phone. All right. What's going on? Okay, sorry about that. I had a phone call. I have no idea where we were. I honestly just lost my whole train of thought. So do I have to do this all over again? Are you kidding me? I guess I do. So we're going to look at the FLW. Why don't we just download this and see where we're at. And then... Or just start over. Let's just start over. I don't know, man. Ryan. All right, guys, so how are we going to break this down? I, I did some math. I did some preliminary numbers, but I want to share. Uh, we're going to jump on the website here, FLW website, look at some past results uh, for 2017, 2018. And I want to show you how I got to the math. In 2017, there's five events, and then you have the regional if you qualify. And then you can go to All-American, all blah, blah, blah. You, you get that. Uh, in 2017, entry fees were only 230 I shouldn't say only. They were $230. And then I, I think the membership was $50. Bucks. Don't quote me on that. I will, spoiler alert, memberships and uh, entry fees have went up since 2017. And we'll get into that. But the first event here, let's actually head on over. We'll go to the FLW website here and take a look. Go under anglers. So I fished... I fished three series for three years. I fished 2015, 2017, and 2018. Uh, 15 and 17, I had good years. I won Angler of the Year. And then my last full five series tournament was last year in 2018, where I ended up in uh, only 13th in Angler of the Year points. So that will give us a good idea of going through this uh, you know, financially as far as my winnings on a good year and my winnings on a not so good year. So if we look at 2017, Northeast BFLs, here's my, here's the schedule, Potomac and we ended up at Thousand Islands. And I want to share with you guys how I broke this down. So the Potomac River was the first event. You're going to have some travel time obviously to get to these places. So what I like to do is I'll go over here, I'll go to tollguru.com. This will actually tell me what it's going to cost to travel with my boat pretty much all over the country. So I live in Conshohocken, Pennsylvania. Try saying that or spelling that three times. And we're heading over to Smallwood State Park on the Potomac. You can put in what you're pulling here, two axle trailer. I put 12 gallons for uh, miles per gallon. I put three bucks, three dollars a gallon. That's, I don't know, that's probably what it was in 17. Obviously that goes up, go up and down depending on uh, on the fuel prices. We hit submit. So you can see it's cost me $67 total, about $24 in freaking tolls. Highway 95 and tolls in this part of the country sucks. Sucks. Back home where I'm from, Wisconsin, our roads are pretty good. Taxes are a little high, but still, we don't have to pay all these expenses and tolls. And the most part, I think, Boat launches are, are free as well. Not the case over here in this part of the country. And I didn't even oh, I didn't even add up boat launch fees in this. We're not going to do that. Here's how we're doing it. Here's how we're doing it, guys. If you're going to practice, if you're going to fish a, a, a local event like a BFL, you need to put at least, in my mind, two days of practice. If you can do more, great. Financially, it does not make sense to do more. In fact, it doesn't even make sense to practice at all once you, once you do the math. But let's just assume most of you guys are going to do a Thursday and Friday. So we have two days of practice. That means you're going to need two nights of lodging. I'm going to assume you're buddying up with someone. Now, I've stayed in some pretty nasty places in my life. Some terrible places that I'm not proud of. But I did it to save a buck or two. Nowadays, you know, I'm forking out an extra 20, 30, 40 bucks a night to make sure my stuff's safe and... There's no uh, cigarette burns in the uh, in the bed, or cats trapped in a room, or you, you get the point. If I can find some of that video, I'll pull it up. Uh, so where were we? So we're gonna say hundred dollars for lodging. It's gonna cost you. It's hundred bucks a night, so two hundred bucks. You're splitting with a buddy, 50-50. hundred dollars. 
So it's going to cost me about 130, what's 67 times 2? 134? Probably. 134. I got, I put another 15 gallons, you know, to and from the launch and the restaurants and the meetings and all that. So 15 gallons times 3 is another $45. 20 bucks for a license, although if you're going to go in the wash, I'm just guessing. Let's just say 20. It can be 30, 40. You can get two five-day licenses. You can get a year license, whatever the case may be. Just trying to be conservative and accurate and to the point here. Boat fuel. Man, that depends on what your style of fishing is and what your practice looks like. But for this case, let's say you roll up with 50 gallons of gas on day one. You're going to burn through 20 gallons on Thursday, maybe 20 on Friday. Now you've got 10 gallons left. You're going to have to fill up. Maybe you don't want to put a full tank in. You put 25 gallons in. You're left with 65 gallons of fuel usage for the event. At three bucks is $195 plus oil if you have a two-stroke. Meals, I don't know, 20 bucks a night. So I pack a lot of, uh, you know, meal replacement, protein bars, trail mix, things like that. I, I solely, strictly drink water. So it doesn't cost me a whole lot, but I like to have a good meal at night with my buddies, which is, let's say it's 20 bucks. Uh, so that's two nights in a row, it's $40. Add on the alcohol bill, at times, it's gonna add up, but for this, math we're doing twenty dollars a night forty bucks so it cost me eight hundred and twelve dollars because of the entry fee and the membership and i took what did i take again eighth place and i made six hundred seventy four dollars so that ain't too bad i'm only down 138 bucks with a top 10 finish but because I do want to get to my 2018 year and, and share with you guys, so I'm not going to bore you with all these details, but I just want to show you how I broke it down, which I think is the most realistic way to do it. Chesapeake Bay, uh, I'm local to Chesapeake. I'm assuming if you're going to fish some of these local events, you're going to be close to where you don't have to spend maybe a, an overnight stay. I stay on Friday night on the Chesapeake just because I feel like driving home after a meeting, want to hang out with my buddies and, and whatnot, so I stay down there, so it still cost me $100, but I went back and forth Thursday, Friday, and Friday morning, and then... Saturday after the event, which was twenty-two fifty one way. Do all the math. Uh, Forty-five gallons of fuel for three days. My meals. So it cost me five hundred and sixty bucks. Probably cost me a little more than that, but we'll say five sixty. Well, I won seven hundred eighteen dollars for a fifth place finish. So I'm up. Made one hundred fifty-eight dollars. Ooh, Oneida. Oneida was tough on me, guys. I don't remember the circumstances, I just sucked. I took 36th place, and uh, I had to drive all the way up to upstate New York. Cost me some money, same thing Lake Champlain. I did make a pretty long run, I believe, in 2017. In fact, uh, yeah, it was a long run. I got a video about that. Uh, let's see here, what did we do? Uh, we made a run in rough conditions, we'll put it that way. That cost me $1,000, $1 $1,051. That's with 25 gallons of fuel a day. I know I spent more than that. Easy math here, what a normal person would do, probably. $1,000, and I, I didn't win anything. So I was fortunate, 1,000 Islands. We come in there, and um, I led Angler of the Year wire to wire every event, which was pretty cool when I won Angler of the Year this year. So it was, it was important to seal that deal, and we did, barely, but we did. Well, we made $6,000. I made $6,437, but it cost me at least $1,000. Again, 25 a day in fuel. Uh-uh. I'm burning full tank. So it's way more than that. So just a quick recap. 2017, I made $8,329. Did I include that? Oh, here, before we get... I don't know if we're going to start over now. All right, so we got through with Clayton. Then I made it to the regionals. And it's entry fee. Entries paid for. They're still an expense, of course. This was on the James River. Uh, it's kind of a big deal. You get to go to the uh, All-American if you do well. So you get a lot to put your time in. They do have a closed uh, time limit for practice. I believe practice starts the Saturday prior to the tournament. So what you got, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? Let's say you're staying six nights. I didn't have a roommate that 
that time. So, I'm, and some of you guys may not. So, I'm going with six hundred dollars. It was two hundred seventy-six dollars in fuel to get there. Three hundred dollars in gas. One hundred twenty in meals. I know it was more than that. Twenty dollars in license. So it cost me one thousand three hundred sixteen dollars. I took twentieth, maybe I don't remember. I won five hundred bucks. So I lost eight hundred sixteen dollars in the entry fee, no fee tournament. So the wrap up twenty seventeen, I made eighty three twenty nine in in BFL regular seasons. Then I won $1,000 for Angler of the Year. And then also, I'm going to add this in because I got some incentives as well. Uh, $2,500. I did win. I won a, uh, an ABA that year. And I, I do believe I got some incentive money from Mercury and my boat company at the time. I had a pretty good year at the local level. But I'm not counting that. I'm just We're going to stay strictly to the FLW stuff. Um, so I won about $11,829. That's with the incentives, okay? I spent $5,584. So I made $6,200. But let's say you don't have incentives at all. $6,245 minus $3,500. I would have only made $2,745 that, that year in 2017. So, so I was fortunate because I won a tournament. But... You get five tournaments. Can you win one? Maybe. Five people will, and that's going to help offset. If you're not winning tournaments, uh, you're losing money. In the okay, so as we jump over here to 2018, I did not have a good season. There's no rhyme or reason. I can't tell you why I suck so bad, but I took 13th in points. I guess you can't mess up, and I messed up. I had one fish. Here we go. Potomac River, I took 35th on the first one. And the next day, we had another tournament. I couldn't get on my spot. Excuses, excuses, right? Get used to it. You're going to have to have some excuses if you fish fish these tournaments like I do. 122nd place. They didn't, they didn't pay me that day. Then we go up Lake Champlain. I took 9th. Another top 10. I get $617. Oneida, one fish short. And Thousand Island, 7. So 2018 was not the best year. I took 13th in points. I made $1,951, and it cost me $4,298 to fish all five events. With a net loss of $2,347. That did not count the, uh, the cost to fish the regionals because I did qualify. Didn't do so well on my home body of water, but that's due to uh, what, what happened there. Oh. Yeah, my trolling motor. Mechanical issues. So, long story short, it's uh, it was a, a tough a tough year in 2018, expense wise as well yeah. to fish. If you think about, it, I mean, 13th. You know, you're right there, top 10 in angler year points, give or take, right? And I, I have a net loss of almost of 2,400 dollars. Oof. All right, guys, I didn't mean to make this video to, like, scare you away from tournament fishing. I just wanted to make this video to make you aware of the costs associated with fishing, even at the local level. I mean, it's expensive. Now, if you can afford it, it's a blast. It's a lot of fun. Competitions with drives us. I mean, I love it. But you've got to really take a look. You know, financially, it does not make sense. It's just an expensive hobby is really all it is. Part two of this video, I'm going to be discussing a little bit more about the uh, the regional events, the opens, and, and go through the costs that were associated with with the opens uh, for my 2017 and 2018 season. I did not do the math on that, but based on these calculations, I'm not looking forward to it. I want to know in the comments below what your thoughts are on the expense of tournament fishing. Um, you know, if it's something that you worry about, if there's ways that you you know perhaps save money in the off season. I mean, what's you know how do you guys do it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to leave you with this. Uh, I just want to let you know that past performance does not guarantee future results. And with that, I'm going to take you over this compound interest calculator because this is the most eye-opening part about it. If you take my 2017 and 2018, the dollars I spent on tournament fishing at the local level, it was $9,882. 
If I put that money away for 30 years and do not touch it, if I just would have said, you know what, I'm not fishing, I'm going to put that in you know, a mutual fund. So I get 8% rate of return over the next 30 years on average. We're just under $100,000 in 30 years. But instead, what am I really up? Thousand bucks in two years? Hey guys, I, I, <laughs> I don't even know. How do you end it? How do you end the video? You end it by this. This is how you end it. Guys, I appreciate you taking a look at my video. Thanks for subscribing. If you haven't already, please do so. And as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the line.